we're going to go ahead. We're not quite ready to start, but I'm going to go ahead and bring our next speakers on on stage to do some of the uh, audio, video, debugging, and troubleshooting. Let's go ahead and bring Tomash and Akash up onto the hey. stage. Howdy, folks. Welcome to the Howdy, party. Going? I'm going to have to get used to this crazy delay that I have on my end. Uh, so there's two ways that you can share your presentation. You can either share the screen directly using the share screen, or if you have it downloaded offline, you can add a source and upload your slides to Restream. I have added the slides. Her, I don't see them in Restream yet. Usually when they pop, if you add it, it should pop up here on the side, and then I can bring it on. Oh, I had to click present. Okay. Aha. There we go. Excellent. All right. Well, we are now at 45 minutes after the hour, unless you're in India, and then which it's 15 minutes after the hour, I believe. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our next two speakers, Tamash and Akashdeep, to talk about the legend, the, the myth, the Gitforge investigation. All right, folks, I'm going to go and hand it over to you. And I will be uh, I'll be in the sidelines if anything comes up. Over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Justin. Um, Tomas, can you hear me? Yeah, cool. Right. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Akash Deep Dhar, an elected representative to Fedora Council, as well as a software engineer in a Red Hat Community Platform Engineering team. I'm accompanied by my friend Tomas Rechka here, who is also an elected representative to FESCO and a product engineering to the Red Hat Community Platform Engineering team. Today, we'll be talking about the updates from the Gitforge ARC investigation. So let's move on to the next slide. Hmm, weird, it did not update at my end. I click the next slide. Yep. Yeah, it has a certain amount of delay, I guess, some growing pains right there. Um, right. So one of the key outcomes regarding the Git Fort situation um, in its entirety was that that in the Fedora Council face-to-face -face hackfest that happened earlier this year, it was decided that we do not see Pegure as being a viable solution for hosting our projects. Um, and the resources about the announcement made by our Fedora project lead can be found over there. Feel free to click on that link. And this announcement encompasses the entire decision that was taken by Fedora Council and the things that led to that happening. As such, we'll be sunsetting Pegio at a later date, which will be very far into the future. You don't have to worry about moving your stuff right now and we'll provide you with ample time, a lot of time for the migration to take place and there will be tools available for that to happen, so you don't have to worry right now. Um, but speaking about moving to a certain different place, we also thought about what alternatives we can move into. And a couple of those that we thought of was GitLab CE or GitLab Community Edition, as well as Forgeo, which is a fork of Gitia, which in turn is a fork of Gogs. Um, and these were the two that we narrowed down. We had a bunch of other choices as well, but um, we wanted to make sure that we were not punished for our growth in community, growth in terms of user base with respect to the economy related to the per user basis of certain managed resources. And therefore, we decided that we would want to host these services in-house with the help from uh, folks at the Red Community Platform Engineering team, but mostly the folks from the Fedora infrastructure. Next slide, please. Mm, yeah, it, it has the spinning thing. I'm gonna assume that it has gone to the next slide, but if it's not, yeah, now it is perfect. Yeah, so for the move as big as this one, because you know it's a Git forge, it has everything from our code basis to design assets to documentation, you name it. Um, we could use all the help that we can get to make this thing happen. 
And for that, the advanced reconnaissance team or the ARC team could use your help, both in respect of representing your use case, depending on what you use your Git forges for, as well as for making sure that Fedora infrastructure is helped from the community to make this big move happen. Here are some resources where you can visit. Uh, take, for instance, the ARC investigation issue tracker number 164. You can visit there. Let us know about your use case from the disk kit, as well as the kind of alternatives that uh, the kind of use cases that you expect from the alternatives to happen, as well as there is a tag. It's called git dash forge dash future in Fedora discussions, which you can make use of to talk about this. As always, the most synchronous means of communication, Fedora chat, is available. There's a Fedora dash arc room over there that you can join right now if you want to participate in making this thing happen. Regarding the requirements, we were going far and wide to make sure that we accounted for things like the suitability of the uh, alternative that we choose, how well it fits with the workflows that we have established so far with respect to ticketing as well, because even Bugzilla is something that we want to replace with this move. The maintenance of resources with respect of both human resources as well as the economy involved in it, how easy or difficult would it be to migrate atop it, how easy is it to extend a certain project to add a certain set of extensions to it, documentation, and how well it fits with our vision about a project that we would want to make use of for our community. Um, but with that, I'm going to pass it over to Tomas, who would cover the remaining slides. Over to you. Of course, I need to be unmuted. Can you hear me all right? Awesome. Cool. So I'll talk a little bit more about the requirements, uh, what we are, why, and what we are exactly going to replace. So. There are two sets of requirements that we got. First one was coming from council, where they, uh, this is what you see on the slide, this kind of distilled version of it, where they tasked us with replacing basically all the processes or, or the, all the processes that are related to packaging, related to releases from point of view of QA, where you have some blocking bug, blocker bugs, you have meetings about blocker bugs, uh, triaging of those into the releases. Uh, also, the usual processes for maintaining a SIG and having everything in one place, which is currently, I think, done in GitLab. <clears throat> also, we, we are we, we are uh, taking in, 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 we are keeping in mind the cost of the, of the project itself. This does not mean only money kind of cost, but as Akash mentioned, it's a lot of manpower. We Somebody has to be there to maintain those services. Somebody has to be there to apply updates. Somebody has to be there to fix issues and, and solve issues. The other set of the requirements that we start gathering are coming from you, but there are users and contributors. And we, what they are asking you to provide us are the user stories that you use Gitforge for. You may ask yourself, why are you asking for user stories when user stories are usually used for software development? But from, for us, comparing two pieces of software based on user stories is much more precise and much more easier to do than just compare them, just compare the processes. So any, in any way, we will have to create the user stories. And your user stories will help us because we might not think of everything. We will definitely keep all the functionality that we currently have. Nothing will be removed. So none of the functionality that you're used to used to have, it will stay there. It will just maybe have a different UI, maybe have a, a different process. And this brings me to time frame of, of this investigation. So we are currently uh, uh, gathering the requirements. Uh, as I just mentioned, and at the end of the presentation, there will be a link to Arc tracker with the, with the Arc investigation where, where people sh are sharing their user stories. Mm, we plan to finish uh, later this month, like at the end of the May, and start with the uh, investigation work in June. And uh, objective for of this investigation is not to say to provide uh, answer to the question which one, but to, to 
give a comprehensive list of solutions of possibilities that both solutions provide us with. So this, we will not be recommending, hey, Federal Council, you should use GitLab because we like GitLab, or you should use Forgero because I am a huge Forgero fan, and I am. <laughs> but we, 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 will, we, we will try to we will provide a council with comprehensive list of features and comparison of those two solutions. And based on that, we will move on to implement a pro proof of concept, but that's far, far away in the future. The next milestone that we will have is Flock to Fedora. So at Flock, we will present the result of the investigation, the, the comparison, and we'll hand it over to Council probably right there. And as I mentioned, here's just a list of resources that you can follow. The, the, there's the Council announcement, there are the discussion threads, there is the, there's the tracker for user stories. And with this, I think that's all from us. And as mentioned in the slides, please join us in the metric room and provide us with your input, what do you would like to have and what it's important for you. Excellent. Thank you both for the overview of the GitForge conversation. Uh, for folks who are listening and watching in the stream, please put your questions into the thread. I just bumped that thread in the Matrix event chat, and we will use that to uh, thread conversations. Um, I also, we can upvote the most popular questions as they come in, uh, but I'm just going to go sequentially for now. We probably have time to get through both of these so far. Um, the first one, I think you did end up answering this later in the presentation. The question came in a little bit early, so you might just uh, circle back to this one. But when is the plan to switch to GitLab? Every few months, there's some discussion, and then it, it pauses. Um, my main understanding about why it, this is happening is because GitLab is not set up to work with most of the old Pagor infrastructure and tooling. Is that true? And is there uh, any chance of Fedora receiving any funding or help from Red Hat as part of this so transition? So let me let me maybe answer this. And uh, okay, yes, this is a question that we are discussing for a long time. And the reason for that is because it's, it is not a simple decision to make. And as it goes for GitLab, uh, we are not sure we'll migrate to GitLab. We will definitely not not migrate to hosted GitLab. We will be GitLab. We will be self, self hosting Git, our GitLab instances ourselves because we believe that. Fedora as a distribution, we should have our infrastructure in our hands. And basically, GitForge, as we use it, is the basic building stone of everything. All the packages are going through there, and we would like to have it self-hosted. So we will definitely not be running on GitLab.com. There is also pricing for that. Most of the most of the companies that are providing services are not really used to open source projects like Fedora, where you have, I can only speak for packages, we have like 30,000 Git repositories just for packages, not counting anything else. That's a huge amount. So when do we, to, to answer the question, when? Hopefully we will get a, get a POC that's coming out of this investigation with the release of Fedora 42. It's not set in stone. We will not be replacing anything in Fedora 42, but we would like to have a proof of concept deployed in Fedora infrastructure for Fedora users to try to try test on and give us feedback on. Magic number 42. Uh, so next question that we have, this is one of my questions, is that you did hint at some personal preferences earlier in the presentation, but I'm curious about your investigation so far. What do you see as the two to three biggest challenges with this migration? So the absolutely biggest will be the biggest challenge I can see clearly is how much of our processes are affected by GitForge, Bugzilla. Bugzilla is obvious, but not not to not to every not, not to everybody. Not everybody understands how many stuff is flowing through the Bugzilla, and we'll therefore throw to now flow to flow through the GitForge. And my personal preference, so yeah, I would, I would prefer, I would prefer uh, for Joe to be the one, but it's not, it's not my work to 
uh, choose or to do investigations based on my preference. So I'm trying to be objective and trying to consider uh, everything as it can be. And the, the other, in the age of modern web, web applications, the other issue that there is, is how do we provide our users with a service that does not require them to download content from third parties that are not federal related? And, and th this is actually an issue. In the day of web apps, when you have all the JavaScripts which are downloading from third parties, you have all the Google Analytics and all the other stuff that's, that's everywhere. So th th there are a bunch. Akash, you want to tag along on that one too? I'm going to agree to the workflows part as being one of the biggest challenges. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that we do in Fedora project that's very specific to us. And it can be a bit difficult to, uh, you know, kind of um, mold them around a certain alternative that might not be made with that thing kept in mind. But uh, yeah, that's what we're here for, fixing challenges. Excellent. So there's a few more questions in the thread. So I do encourage both of you to check that out after the talk. I think we have a time, this one looks like a quick one. So I think we can cover this one before we bring the next speakers on. Is the use of dist git also a part of the forge implementation? Yes. Yes, it is. It's not just uh, it's not just about replacing git hosting, but it's also about replacing this git. That was actually the first point that we were asked by council to investigate the feasibility of it. All right. So there is one more question in there. Uh, is it totally impossible to go back to Pagor? But I think we're going to have to do that one through the chat. So uh, Tomash and Akash, definitely check out the Q&A thread. But otherwise, thank you so much for the update on the Git Forge. I know this is a very hot topic in the community these days, and I appreciate you taking some time out to talk to the community about what's going on behind the scenes with this conversation. Totally. Thank you, folks, for being here. Behind the scenes. <laughs> Anyways, thanks, folks. See you next time. <laughs>